A common technique in e-learning is to require learners to click all items before they can move forward in the course. Now, this happens for any number of reasons. It could be client requests or compliance reasons. But whatever your reasons, there will likely be certain times or, or areas where you want to make sure the learner views all of the content before they proceed. Now, with tabs interactions, the process is straightforward. You just add visited states for each button or tab, and then you add a trigger to make something happen when all tabs are visited. It's classic storyline building blocks, states, layers, and triggers. But what about with accordion interaction? Now, while they're similar to tabs interactions, accordion interactions, or panels, expand and collapse and move all around the slide because they require buttons and triggers on each slide layer. So the good news is, if you know how to do it with tabs, you can do it with accordions. Let me show you how it works. All right, so the reason this is a challenge with accordions is that we have these initial buttons here on the base layer. If I group those, this make a difference here. But on the base layer, we have, what in this case, four panels, four buttons. And what happens is each of these panels links to a slide layer. So the, the majority of the interactions taking place not on the base layer, but actually on the slide layers. So once the learner clicks any one of these initial panels, they're taken to a slide layer. And then the same thing happens again, right? With the exception of the current tab, there's no trigger. But for the remaining for the remaining panels, there's three more triggers going to three new slide layers. And that's how we create that, that expanding and collapsing effect with the accordions. So we can't just put visited states on each of these panels because we'd have to have them on all of the slide layers and we'd have to evaluate all of those slide layers, probably need some variables to do it. It'd just be a lot of work. Faster way, easier way is to think about how we do this with the tabs interactions. So let me just pop over here real quick to a tabs. So the tabs interaction, straightforward, we have a tab. Each of the tabs has a state here for visited. And once all three of these states have been clicked, these buttons have been clicked, there's a visited state that's enabled. And then we have this trigger that says when the state of all of those three tabs are visited, I change the next button to normal. Now this is really easy in tabs because we have slide layers that only show the content. We don't have to copy those interactive buttons to each of the slide layers. So tabs makes it really easy. But we can take the same principle, the same idea here from the tabs interaction and apply it to our accordion. So a couple different ways we could, we could approach it. We could add visited states for each of these panels. You can see where we're using a custom open stand, uh, open state here. And the reason we do that, you can watch the accordion tutorial, but essentially it's a custom state that shows an open state for us. If we go to here, this is the open state. And we don't have storyline overriding our interactivity with, with built-in visited states. So we could add the visited state here for the base layer. And the way it would work is we just say edit states and new state, and we just choose a visited state. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. We really don't need it to change. So what we would do then for each of these base layer objects is add that state. So let's just come in here real quick, say format painter, and I'll click the second tab. There's my visited third tab and fourth tab. So there's my, my, four, my four visited states. The way I'll make this work is the the first time the learner clicks any one of these tabs, it's automatically going to be visited. But we're going to need to override that. So for each slide layer, for the appropriate tab or panel, we're going to set a timeline trigger that sets the state of the base layers panel to visited. So we're going to manually set these four panels to visited based on the slide layer the learner's viewing. So actually, to make this a little bit easier, let's just say... I'm going to make just say base layer. And the reason I'm adding that is even though we'll be able to see these base layer objects from the slide layers, the benefit here is that it'll just be that much faster and easier to identify when we're in, in the uh, triggers panel. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about any triggers here for visited because immediately when the learner clicks one of these, the state will be visited. But we really care about where they go on the slide layers. So the timeline trigger here is change the state of, and we'll say change the state of our base layer tab, and we're on tab layer uh, tab layer one, so we'll say on base layer tab one to, to visited when the timeline starts on this layer. Great. So with this, I'm just going to cop copy this. So I can choose right-click, copy, or I can uh, click copy the selected trigger, and I'm going to paste it on this next 
timeline. But because we're on tab two right here, I want to change base layer tab two to base layer tab two. And we'll do the same for three, paste, and then change this one to three, and then four. Okay, so that should work. Let's add our, well, we don't really have a lot of space right here. Let me take a look at the player. We can use the player next button in this case. It works the same if we're working on the slide layer or the, the, uh, the custom label. So we have a custom and we have a player and everything is enabled right here, right? Cool, okay, so click okay. So we need to disable the player button here when the slide first loads, so new trigger. And this is pretty basic, change the state of the, all the way down here at the very bottom. We'll say that change the next button, right? So as soon as the learner, as soon as the slide begins, change the next button to disabled. And then uh, when the timeline starts, cool. Okay, so now we can just add our conditional trigger that says uh, change the state of our next button to normal not when the timeline starts, but when the state of, so we're going to evaluate all four of those base layer tabs. One, two, three, and four. So when they're all visited, change it. So let's take a look and see how, how this works. Now I'll show you one other way. This is another way that I might prefer to do it. It's the same process, but I'll show you the difference here. So I'm clicking each of these. I can't really see the visited states because that's all on the base layer. I can see that this is still in the disabled state upon clicking this fourth tab, and now I have access to go forward. So that's how we can set that conditional interaction. Uh, the other way I might do it is just to put some tabs off to the side and have visited our buttons and have a visited state this way. The benefit to doing this is it's a little bit easier to evaluate because you could just move these into the middle of your interaction, and then we can preview it. Yeah, it's gonna look a little messy at first, but I can at least see those change to visited states, right? So if I hide this layer, you can see the tab one is visited, the second tab, third, fourth, I go back to first. If I hide the layer, I have a hide layer button here, and now all four are visited, and you can see the next button is enabled. So that's basically it. If you know how to do the tabs interaction, you can do an accordion interaction, but it's a common request to lock down the slide or uh, just ensure that the learner has clicked everything before uh, before they continue. Well guys, that is it. That is the look on uh, how to require learners to click all panels in accordion interactions. Hope you found this helpful. Thanks so much and we'll catch you guys online.